You're probably watching this video because, well, you have a hard time picking a game to play. This is actually a very common problem. Imagine this scene with me and tell me if you can relate. It's the end of a long day of work or school. You make dinner, you scroll social media, you check out your Steam library, nothing stands out. Let's look through Game Pass, nothing speaks to you. Maybe there's something on Netflix, nope, too many options. Three hours have passed, you've been scrolling Reddit, Twitter, and because you got extra bored, you also checked out LinkedIn. Now it's bedtime, Good night. this sucks. You had some time off, you were excited to start that new game you got for free on PS Plus or a new JRPG on your Nintendo Switch, but instead you're in bed preparing for tomorrow. Folks, this awful phenomenon has a name. It's called analysis paralysis, and it's actually scientific, believe it or not. It's the idea that as you are given more choices, your ability to make a decision decreases. And if you have ADHD brain like me, it's even worse. Let me tell you about my YouTube channel. Don't worry, it's relevant. I make video essays about video games and video game backlogs. I like to help people play and enjoy the games they've bought, and I like to create content that finds solutions to crap like analysis paralysis. If you're into this kind of video game self-help thing, and if you like deep dives on indie games or 40 minute critiques of Xenoblade Chronicles, please subscribe. This video is very simple. I want to help you make better decisions as a gamer. I don't want you to fall into despair and waste an evening on social media when you could have been experiencing some new exciting game from your backlog. So I found this productivity article that has nothing to do with video games, but it's about analysis paralysis. While it's about being productive, it's actually a nearly perfect analogy to how we can better pick video games to play and also how to rework our mindset so we can be better, smarter consumers who are decisive. Let's get started. Point number one. Overthinking lowers performance on mentally demanding tasks. The article claims cognitive studies and research show the brain is like a short-term memory system similar to the RAM in your computer. We can only hold so many things in our brains at once. Further, high pressure, anxiety producing situations lead to lower performance on cognitively demanding tasks. Think about it, it makes sense. If you work from home like me, you might have a ton of projects to complete, but you also have to take out the trash, clean the kitchen, mail that package. Oh, and pick up the cat vomit on the thing. Do you ever fall into this weird space where you spend so much time thinking about what you need to do that you distract yourself in order to not do anything? I do. When it comes to games though, if I'm overstressed with work or life circumstances, A, I need to focus on life first, not games, duh. But B, I also find it much easier to just play an easy multiplayer game I'm familiar with, like Hunt Showdown or Golf with Friends. The idea of starting a new game and learning new mechanics, it sounds really daunting when I could just play Dark Souls again for the 10th time. But don't worry, later in this video, I'll present you with some amazing tips to help you get out of this rut. Next, overthinking eats up your willpower. Another study, and this one is kind of crazy, published by the National Academy of Science, shows that parole board judges were more likely to grant parole earlier in the day, but after long sessions, were much more likely to deny parole, regardless of the crime's severity. Psychologists call this decision fatigue. The more decisions we make, the more worn out we get. It's why I start strongly motivated in the morning, but over the day, I get tired. I make worse decisions. And now, I'm playing Survive.io instead of working on this project deadline. After a long day, it becomes even more difficult to make yet another decision. What game should I play? Something easy or nothing at all? Starting a new game? Forget it. And point four, overthinking makes you less happy. Now, things get even more interesting. The article now talks about economist Herman Simon, who in 1956 coined the term satisficer to describe a decision-making style that prioritizes an adequate solution over an optimal solution. Now, listen here. This is the craziest part of the entire article. Even thinking about choosing a less optimal choice makes me cringe deep within my bones because later the article describes a maximizer, which as I found out, that's what I am. Even if I have plenty of decent decisions that will produce enjoyment, I must examine every option and choose the one that will be the most optimal. However, ultimately, a study by Swarthmore College showed that maximizers report significantly less satisfaction and happiness in life, and much more regret. They engage in social comparison and thoughts like, what if I chose that other option instead of the one I decided on? So yeah, this hits me at my core. Do you know how long it takes me to choose where to take my wife for dinner? Long enough that we settle in the same Mexican restaurant every single time. Or poke, but a good though. In fact, I usually don't even like playing a game's sequel unless I've played the original. I didn't want to play Hitman 2016 until I played Hitman 1, Hitman 2, 
Hitman contracts, Hitman blood money, and so on. In my mind, I would be unable to enjoy Hitman if I didn't understand answers to basic questions like, where did Agent 47 come from? How did the series start? How did it get to where it is now? What story beats am I gonna miss? Anyone who knows this series is rolling their eyes because let's face it, this game barely has a story and the most interesting thing you'll learn from playing all of them is seeing how they've progressed over the years mechanically and graphically. Hitman 3 has basically perfected the formula and there's almost no point in playing the older games, except blood money, because that game's goat. If you're a maximizer like me, let's take a deep breath for just a moment. Let's acknowledge that we aren't that crazy, we just want to get the most out of life and milk it for everything it's worth. So, how does someone who struggles with picking a game and struggles with their giant backlog counter it? Well, these things are often more internal than we realize. It's much more human nature to open up Warzone or whatever your junk food game is than try something new. It's just how we are. But if we can work some strategies out, we might just be able to change that. So. Here's the promised part of the video. I'm gonna show you eight ways you can begin walking down the path of picking a game to play based off suggestions in the article. Number one, structure your day for the decisions that matter most. Our ability to make smart decisions gets worse as the day progresses because we're making decisions all day long. I don't know about you, but I find it really hard to start a new game at the end of a long, hard day of work and relationships and chores. So here's a solution. First, get all the important stuff done first. Prioritize your family or your schoolwork or your work work, but once you've gotten chores finished, kids in bed, household in order, make a habit of creating a routine for playing a new game. Here's an example. Maybe every Monday night from 9 p.m. to 11 p.m., you're gonna start a new game, pick it up again the following week. Repeat this process until you finish it. If you've already made the decision to add this into your routine, it's gonna make sitting down and playing that game so much easier. Plus, you're gonna be super excited to play it because it's in your schedule. It gives you something to look forward to. Two, intentionally limit the amount of information you consume. I love to consume information before I make a decision. In fact, I'm one of those people that before starting a new hobby, I've done hours of research. I know everything about the hobby. To put this practically into picking a game to play, I think the most obvious villain here is a sizable backlog. It feels impossible to pick a game when there's so many to choose from. The solution, make it as easy as possible to start and finish a game. Either develop a method to track your backlog or check out my other video on how to beat your backlog. I have two methods to gamify your backlog. One is by playing a backlog draft with your friends and two is by playing a season of backlog golf with your friends or other like-minded individuals. And I'm currently working on a new video that will include dozens of methods to pick a game to play. Three, set a deadline and hold yourself accountable. This is a method I've used in my own personal productivity to accomplish those tasks I've been putting off for so long. Once you've picked a game to play, to encourage yourself to continue playing it, set a time frame for how long you think it'll take to beat. Let's get mathematical. Say you want to play a Plague Tale Innocence. Okay, how long to beat says it's about 10 and a half hours to beat the main story. If we're working with our previously determined Monday night from 9 to 11 p.m. strategy, it's gonna take about four weeks to finish it. This method not only makes picking a new game more manageable, but it'll fix your expectations so you know how long you'll be playing it and even having that little bit of information should help you get it started and get into it. Four, know your main objective. Have you ever been invited to something that you just aren't really into? Like maybe a friend wants to go to a Nickelback concert and you're just like, I don't know, maybe. Well, I think this isn't far from the reality of gaming and picking games to play. Let me ask you this. Why do you play video games? I've purchased so many humble bundles I've lost count. I have so many games in my backlog on different consoles from so many different genres. Games I got on sale because it was a really good deal. But before I got into PC gaming, I basically only played Halo and NBA 2K. Now I play other FPS games, point and clicks, strategy games, ARPGs, the list goes on. But I feel compelled often to enjoy all of them because, well, I bought them. It's like when you buy food at the grocery store and it just sits in your fridge and then it goes bad. I feel bad because I paid money for it. I wanted to get the most out of it. But that's just not fair to myself. Why should I have to play all point and clicks from this one bundle when I really just bought it for the wolf among us? I play games for five reasons. Having fun with friends, enjoying new gaming experiences, analyzing mechanics and themes, trashing people in multiplayer, unwinding and processing life. If I'm not fulfilling one of those reasons I play video games, I have to ask myself, is it really worth playing? Most of the time, a point and click isn't engaging my brain. It's usually boring and slow, but I feel a tug to at least try it because I own it. As a good friend of mine who reviews board games used to say to me, life is too short to play a bunch of seven out of tens. 
If a game isn't fulfilling or hitting one of the reasons you play games, just drop it like a sack of potatoes. Develop your own list of reasons for why you play games. Yours might just be to have fun, and that's totally fine. That's your reason. But take some time, work out your reasons, and let me know in the comments below. Why do you play video games? Five, get out of your own head and talk it out with someone else. If I've learned anything in my short 31 years on Earth so far, I'm so old, it's that I make decisions quite a bit more poorly than I perceive them. In other words, if I'm making decisions in a vacuum, I'm probably going to choose things that serve myself and don't consider others. Don't learn this the hard way. After all, the way of a fool is right in his own eyes, but a wise man listens to advice. If you're stuck choosing a game, or if you're wondering if you're crazy for not enjoying Red Dead Redemption 2, talk about it with other like-minded people. I haven't played that game, by the way. If you're lacking a group of like-minded backlog connoisseurs who are also striving toward the goal of beating their own backlogs, now is a great time for me to direct you to the link in the description to join our Discord server. We have a slew of folks who've arrived at our Discord server just from watching videos on my channel, just like you. And these people are intent on beating their backlogs. We like to discuss common backlog problems, and we like to just talk and hang out. We'd love to have you join. Six, approach problems with an iterative mindset. Ultimately, an iterative approach allows you to slowly creep up on a problem incrementally instead of facing it head on. If my problem is beating my backlog and I'm doing so by trying to play six different games at once, I'm probably gonna end up with six games I've played two hours each of and I'll never touch any of them again. Instead, try focusing on just one or two games at a time. Try giving yourself two hours of a game before you decide to stick with it or bin it. Seven, start before you feel ready. We're more prepared to make decisions than we realize. I might feel like I can't start Tomb Raider 2016 because I haven't played the original games, but that's silly. Ultimately, I can think of plenty of times I didn't want to start a new game because I was concerned I wouldn't enjoy it because I wasn't in the right state of mind. Recently, I downloaded The Return of the Oprah Din. I only had an hour to play, I didn't know anything about it, and I was immediately hooked. It was all I could think about for like three days in a row. I beat it and was satisfied. The thing is, I never thought I'd be able to tackle it because I didn't have the time, and I didn't think I had the willpower. Sometimes, you just need to pick a game and go, even if you don't feel like it. It works. And finally, eight, make your decision the right one. This quote from Ed Batista of Stanford Business School really just sums this up better than I can. Before we make any decision, we're understandably anxious and focused on identifying the best option because of the risk of being wrong. But merely selecting the best option doesn't guarantee that things will work out well in the long run. It's what happens next and in the days and months and years that follow that ultimately determines whether a given decision was right. Pick a game, even if it might not be what you're feeling at the moment, and don't worry about it being a poor use of your time. You'll figure that part out once you get into it. But remember, even though it's just a game, every time you pick a new one to play, you're building self-confidence, and you're learning to make decisions, and you are moving past being indecisive. I know it's just picking a game to play, but the longer you practice getting better at it, the better you're gonna be at it. So I encourage you to be on the lookout for my next video on tons of methods to choosing a game to play. Hopefully this video helped you to think through the psychology of analysis paralysis and decision making, and I hope my next backlog video helps even more. Thanks for watching. If you enjoy this kind of content, please like and subscribe to the channel. It helps me determine what kinds of content to make and it helps me to engage the right audience. Yeah, peace.